And now we take you to a kitchen in Los Angeles, California. Hey, I think I'll eat a beef and bean chimichanga. Looks like a great idea. Okay, microwave. Looks like we removed the chimichanga from the wrapper. Okay, so uh, place flap side down, flap side down. Bake uncovered until thoroughly heated. Okay, okay, thirty. Wait, oh, that's oven. Oh my gosh, you're not looking at microwave directions. No, I accidentally looked at the oven once. Chimichanga wrap, uh, wrapper, and place it on the microwave. Safe. Safe plate. Yeah, I got it. Heat uncovered on full power. Is it not half power? Full power? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, full power. Uh, flip chimichanga to heat thoroughly. What does that mean? Well, I'm gonna. We're gonna have to see. Let me see what this means. Caution. Feeling may be hot. Oh no, that's gonna burn. My tongue, it's gonna hurt. Frozen. Let's see. Frozen 40 seconds. Yeah, this is frozen. 40 seconds per side. So, 40 seconds on one side, 40 seconds on the other, huh? Yeah, I think so. Alright, let's test this out. Come here. Actually, let's put that back here. How do we close that up? Actually, I'm going to email these guys. Alright, so we got packing tape. Okay. Okay, so here we go. 40 seconds each side. This clock already said 44 seconds, so we're going to count that down. 41, 40, 39, 38, 39, 36, 37, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 30, 4, 29, 28, 27, 27, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21. Fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, seven, five, four, three, two, one. Forty seconds, other side. We'll go thirty. I mean, doesn't let you do forty seconds. I mean, come on. So. Sixty, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve, ten, eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, three, four, three, two, one.
Gonna add a little bit of Thai peanut. Alright. It looks good. Gonna add a little bit of wing time medium buffalo wing sauce. Oh shit! Put a little too much there. Alright. Now. 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 Test it out. Now test it out. Uh, let's test it out. Mm hmm. Now it's gonna be. How's it gonna be? Now remember, folks, we have quite a spillage in the village here. I'm going to put you closer to the action. Whoops. The cat just jumped on me. Oh, I just jumped on me. Smell this? Funk. Mm, barbecue. Mmm. <laughs> Whoa. Mmm. 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 Interesting. Mmm. That's actually really good. You know, that's an underestimated thing. I think if... If they did a uh, Texas sort of like... Uh, Texas... Mexican... Not Texas. I mean, what makes barbecue Texas? I don't know. Oh. Ah. Oh, ha. Ah. Hmm. Mo. Ah. Ooh. Mm. Mm. Oh my god. My beer. Mm. It's all the way over there. Elysian space dust. IPA. Okay. Back to the show. Now, you can tell how much I care about this by the way I cut my my uh, burrito. Mm, good. This might have to heat up a new one, right? Because I got all this, I got all this sauce on here. It'd be a shame for it to go to waste. Oh, geez, that's hot. Mmm. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. mm. Hot in more ways than one. One might say, and one would say. Hot because it's been in the microwave long, and hot barbecue. Mmm. Mmm. It's been an interesting question in my mind. Think about David Letterman. It's good. And he loves drinking his coffee really hot, apparently. Mmm. 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 Whoa. Mmm. Oh my god. Mmm. It's hot. Oh boy. It's oh my God. I think I'm gonna it was so good I gotta eat another one that's how good it was hey uh Tina's bean chimichangas if you want to sponsor me The Inspirato Projecto Podcast. I will be, you know, I will not be opposed to that. I will not be opposed to that. So, 
so these various advertiser, uh, not advertisers, um, what do you call them? I don't know. Oh yeah, 40 seconds. Eighty seconds. All right. So, okay, forty seconds. Wow. It's a, it's a tricky thing because right now it's at forty-eight seconds. Started at fifth. No, started at uh, one minute. So what is that? It was down to 60, so 40. Okay. If that's good. 80? I don't know. Oof. Oh, shoot. It's heating up the bar. <coughs> ooh, that's... Ooh, it's almost noxious. Mm. <coughs> Yikes. Brr. seems to be noxious if you keep it uh oh it's crackling in there So we're going 30 seconds now. Jeez, that was crazy. Uh, the cool thing is, I got lime, which I'll be using. I'll be using it. What's going on with this? Uh, Crack it open. Sprinkle some lime on it. I've got a half a lime right here that I'm going to completely use. I uh, didn't use it on the last project, on the last food project. However, I will be using it. In this food project, I will be, I will be doing that. I will be doing that. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. I came across some information. Whoa. Brother today, I came across information of uh, YouTubers who are having a hard time. They're becoming anxiety. They're having anxiety. They're, they got these depression issues. Young kids. Only young kids. Depression issues. Anxiety. All that stuff. And there are YouTube stars making all this money doing what they love doing. I would say go out to Peru. Do some peyote. In Peru with a freaking shaman. Learn about yourself. Go out there with a shaman. Take some ayahuasca. And be indoctrinated into the all-seeing eye. The all that is. Oh, please tell me I cooked this enough. Please. Please. Ha, ah, that's cold. Oh my god, no way. 
All right, hold on. It was quite curious. It told me to cook the burrito 40 seconds on each side. I cooked a minute on one side. No, not a minute. Forget it. I don't want to say it. I don't want to... If you're doing what you love doing, how do you get burnt out? Is it a uh, feeling of expectations of what you think the audience wants? Because th the audience wouldn't be there if they didn't like what you were already doing. So, why is there an expectation? I'm, I'm gonna hold on, I'm gonna sniff a green marker. When this one's mint. This is for me. Oops. This is for me. Uh, the, uh, what are they called? Mr. Sketch scented markers. I like these. All right, we're going to eat this. God. Good. Better hot than cold, I always say. I'm going to put that. In. Ever since you guys were there, right? You heard the Uber driver. He said, put lime on stuff. Well, we're putting lime on stuff. We're doing it. Improv, uh, Inspired Projecto is about definitely the appreciation of creative uh, process, the, the unfolding of it. What goes into making something. The authenticity and the unapology that it takes to move it along. Each time I put my voice out there, there's another opportunity for me to be accountable to what I just said. In addition to being accountable to myself, I'm accountable to you, so to speak, if I even cared about that. Oh, good. Oh, hot. Mm. So, if we're creating what we love, why, why the pressure? Create what you love. No pressure. I've used the doodle analogy on many occasions. When you're talking on the phone, you're doodling. That's the purest form of art. So use that when creating what you're creating. The audience is there because you're being who you are. Does the pressure come from upholding a particular character? Is that where the pressure comes from? The pressure of continually being inspiring and being afraid of not being inspiring anymore? Is it the pressure of expectations of mm, um of being afraid of not living up to the image that your audience has built up for you there was a great article mm, that I read earlier today It's interesting because I frequently say something very similar to this. Okay, so the article said you are a different person to every single person you, you meet. Every single person you meet thinks that you are a different person. You're a specific kind of person. So you can never actually be the person... that you think you're presenting to them. Even after you present that person that you think you're presenting to them, you forget that kind of person you're presenting to them. It gets difficult upholding a specific identity, right? Who taught us that it was important to uphold a specific identity? Who said that to us? 
Who said that we had to be this consistent, specific identity? And whoever that was, uh, it was a, most likely a human. So why are we feeling like we're slaves to whatever that idea was? Is it that just that desire of wanting to live in a ready-made, ready-made life? So you don't, you know, the less thinking you do, it's the better. So retirement, that's what retirement uh, uh, symbolizes, right? The less thinking you do, the better. You finally retire, you finally don't have to think anymore. You don't have to, re you don't have to work anymore. You don't have to work so hard for someone else anymore. And... Um, because so much emphasis has been put on working hard, working hard, working hard, working hard, and that being this respectable thing, that's what we look at. Working hard, working hard. Then we respect that person. We say, oh my gosh, I respect you because you worked so hard. You work so hard. I respect you, Lieutenant. You were so disciplined all those years. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, thank you, Captain, for all of your service to the military branch that you served for all those years and putting up with the rules, regulations, disciplines, um, and limited mindsets that were placed against you. The thing we're actually saluting them for is the courageousness that they took in being so molded. That's what we're thanking them for. And because we've been taught since an early age that this is a very important thing to do through the history books, that becomes a very well-respected thing because many people have died in that honor and lots of graves. So we honor that and yet how many of those of us who honor that want to actually see the after effects of that? What if those who honor it so hardcore, the young kids, the, you know, playing Medal of Honor and Call of Duty and whatnot, what if all those kids who, who love that ga those games so much and the people who so very much, you know, the patriots of the world who stand up for that stuff, what if they immediately... We're given the opportunity to talk and hang out with, commune with, learn from military vets who are missing half of their bodies. Do they feel that they really... I mean, do they feel that they really put in and, like, work into something that was really, 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 really worth it. That's a hard thing to come up to terms with. The idea of being told to be a part of this particular fighting. Here comes a helicopter.
so we're told there's this honor, there's this great, great service to the country for going off and fighting for the freedom of the country. How much freedom is there? Freedom is the, like, we're actually the bullies. Where's their freedom? We're like attacking places. No one born as a small child wants to fight. Who wants to fight? Who wants to fight? Who loves that nine to five job? Where they come across opposition every day. Who loves that? Who lives for that? If you love that, if you live for that, please email me at inspiratoprojecto at gmail.com. If you love working your 9-to-5 job, if you live for that, if you think it's so, 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 so important that you put aside your talents and passions. Like, for instance, I remember there were recruiters that would come by my high school. My dad was in the Air Force growing up. And so there was this idea in our brain that perhaps someday, my brother too, I think, someday I might go into the into the Air Force. So there was this idea of like, hey, maybe I'll go into the military. And then I started getting interested in acting. And then uh, they came around and I said, well, is there acting? And they couldn't find a place to place me. I said, oh, no, no, I don't want to do it then. And then... Uh, I was in uh, COD, College du Page, which is John Belushi and uh, Jim Belushi's old old stomping grounds where they grew up. I was there and I, I uh, saw another recruiter. And same question. They asked me, what I liked and because I've heard so much of these these things where you know after people are in the military for X amount of years and they're I've heard some terrible stories bad things happen to them uh, PTSD or they get shell shot they get blown up or who knows what um I mean, those are nightmares for the rest of their life, and no one's willing to help them out. By no one, I don't mean VA hospitals. VA hospitals are helping them out. But my God, we just, we hear the uh, stories time and time again, where the government. promises a particular thing fight for our country we give this particular thing and then you fight for the country and your your dick is blown off by some explosion I met a man like that when I was substitute teaching, I was substitute teaching for a special ed class. And on lunch break, I would talk with him. I would learn from him. And he told me how he was in Vietnam. He got injured. So he asked him, you're an through catheter. And just what he had to go through in the court system, stacks and stacks of paperwork that proved his, you know, point. And then they come back and they say, we can't afford, you know, sorry, we got to close this case. We cannot afford to pay for this. 
So he's always fighting. For something that apparently was was um, promised to him. It's like an employment benefit kind of thing. You know, you sign the contract after you read what this new employer is um, offering to you. And there should be that. You're going to come fight for us. We're going to uphold this and the bargain. And still that. I mean, what's the thing that's holding them accountable? Even people who put their hands on the Bible lie. There's no actual sacred text. I mean, What if Jesus' words have been so completely twisted throughout the years and turned into a sacred text that there's a remnant in the truth. Remnant of truth. And, uh, what's out there and that people have been following for eons so there's one remnant and a bazillion other clever writers Hmm. 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 Interesting. Sacred text. Hmm. That's stuff we ought to be investigating. The sacred texts. Find out who exactly wrote them. Who? And who altered them? Who altered them? Changed them to fit their agendas. Alright, that's all for now. More later. We're going to play the let's see if I can get them to say hi game. Hello. Hi, Debbie. Good, how are you? Hi. Hi. Well, that was a group of five, and three of the five said hello. I think the other two felt the other three were representing them. So believe it or not, you are listening to another edition of Insprato Projecto Radio. You just heard John Garside from Forgotten Tales doing another social experiment. He's our man on the street. On the beat. On the beat street. So he was out there. Before that, uh, you heard some folks trying to trying to make a, a chimichanga. Apparently, I hope they enjoyed it. I really do hope they enjoyed it. Thank you for tuning in. 
Uh, if you'd like to contribute, please feel free. Send email with your audio submission. This could be spoken word. This could be, uh, you know, let's say, for instance, if you capture, like, a good, uh, let's say if you talk in your sleep and you got people who live at your house who know that you, you talk in your sleep, and, oh, um, kitty, kitty, they know you talk in your sleep, and they can actually record you while you're sleeping, that would be awesome, that kind of stuff is awesome, it'd be so cool to hear what you would, what you would have to say, I just dropped some pencils behind this desk here, so, yeah, Here we are. All right. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. Pencils, markers, and some pens. La cucaracha. Like a garage, uh, trapped it behind the desk again. La cucaracha, la cucaracha, pencils, markers, and some pens. La cucaracha, la cucaracha, I trapped it behind the desk again. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Wait. How, do, how can we make that work? <clears throat> La cucaracha, la cucaracha, pencils, markers, and some pens. La cucaracha, la cucaracha, I dropped it behind the desk again. <laughs> I dropped it behind the desk again. But da na na, but da na 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 na. Dropped it behind the desk. Uh, I, I dropped it behind the desk again. I dropped it behind the desk again. Oh, something like that, maybe. I dropped it be I dropped it behind the desk again. That's good. I dropped it behind the desk again. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. Here we go. From the top. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. Pencils, markers, and some pens. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. Dropped it behind the desk again. Try to find the chords on that.
Da 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 da